Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Family Empire Houston, Season 1, Episode 2. I need y'all to subscribe, like, share, comment. You ready, Blair? Yes. Walk us through this. All right. So, Nicole, she wakes up at 4 a.m. to have her hair done. Like me. She's got her hairstylist (laughs) slash family friend Mm -hmm. there, and she's got a lot of energy. Yeah. It's a little too much for Nicole at 4 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Nicole then has a meeting with her assistant. Yeah. Um, The offer has been made by the doctor to purchase the million-dollar home, Mm -hmm. Uh, and she talks just a little bit about how she likes working with her assistant because it's not a family member, so Mm -hmm. there's just certain boundaries that they don't cross. Okay. Nicole's husband, Larry, gets in, and he's just getting in um, when she's starting her day. Mm -hmm. So with their schedules being the way that they are, it's taken a toll on them um, for their relationship. In the past, communication has been an issue. I Mm -hmm. mean, there would be days that they wouldn't talk. Now, if I like you, Mm -hmm. I said in episode one that I don't think Larry likes Nicole. Or they don't like each other. Who knows, right? But, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm just playing a little Caesar discord. Okay. Right? Days without talking to each other? days Mm -hmm. i ain't that busy and you don't have to be that busy larry why you want to work so much Mm. be at home get a job that's like an eight hour shift besides a 12 hour shift but you know i i I'm going to hold my opinions to like, you know, later on in the episode. Yeah. My thoughts on the Larry and Nicole situation thing. Um, it could very much be what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also think that people get used to their routine and if they don't make it an intention to break out of it, mm-hmm. to try to communicate with their spouse, to try to foster that relationship, people just be like, all right, you know, we on the grind, we going about our business yeah. and this is what we have to do. And then you look up and then you realize that people are unhappy. Mm. So I You're think right. I think that that's another possible option. But because we saw flashbacks of Nicole having resentment, that could be another reason why. I don't think I'm gonna try to make the effort for to schedule a date night or ask Larry when he's free because I kind of don't want to even be around him right now. I got mm. a little resentment. So, mm-hmm. and it could be either way, but I do think that a large portion of it is just people just going about their day to day, not um, making time for each other. Before you know it, six days and you haven't even talked to each other. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, um, but they're talking now mm-hmm. and she fills Larry in on what happened at the crawfish boil and the joke about the wall between Keita and Misha yeah. about um, Keisha and Nicole's relationship. Mm-hmm. And she really didn't like that. So she appreciates Larry cause she feels like he's like a good person to talk to when they do have a chance to talk. Mm-hmm. And she's really her, he's really her confidant. So, but Nicole says that she wants to talk to Keisha one-on-one just without everybody there so they can try to figure out their relationship. That is true. And guess mm-hmm. what? I'm just so in Caesar discord. Mm-hmm. For all I know, they probably best friends and things like that when they both awake. Yeah. And when they catch each other. Mm-hmm. But I do find it interesting that like, you know, this problem that y'all have could easily be solved mm. if if you want to solve it. And it might and it, it might take effort. And yeah. sometimes people don't have the energy to, to make mm-hmm. efforts. So um so we've got Misha, um, her mom Jackie and yeah. Granny. So they all it looks like they're at this event hall place. Like Granny's talking about how she has an event coming up, so they're trying to get the tables and mm-hmm. the chairs ready. So Granny, we find out <laughs> When she was in her purchasing land time, she would pull for sale signs out of the ground mm. so that way other people could not buy the property. Now, that's illegal, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> and then when asked about it, Granny says she'd just be outbidding people. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's the right answer. No, 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 no. You're going to jail, okay? You're going to jail. <laughs> so Misha talks about converting the land from what it's currently worth to be worth million dollars of real estate by this build to rent um, property yeah. idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we get a little history lesson. Um, back in the day, most black people had to purchase land with cash because banks were not loaning money to black people. Mm. And it was amazing what Oscarine and Frank were able to build with just a high school education. Facts. So Misha wants to take her grandparents' legacy to the next level. Mm. Granny, after this conversation with Misha, is thinking about possibly holding on to it. Mm-hmm. Um, not holding on to it to give to the grandkids, but maybe to sell it to the grandkids and not the outside public. Because Granny says she ain't just giving stuff away. Oh, no, 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 no. It's about the dollar uh-huh. <laughs> for Miss Oscar. Reed. Listen here, if I'm <laughs> able to pull for sale signs out, out the lawn and put it in the back of my car, I'm not giving y'all nothing. Yeah. Now, listen here. You can hear if you li- if you take enough time to listen, be- just listen. You will hear Misha's intention. Mm-hmm. She wants to take it to the next level. Mm-hmm. She wants to be known for this generation that's coming up as the Oscarine. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? As the one that basically Granny did this and Granny got us both our license and things like that at the same time. Talk about me and Nicole, but I was the one. The legacy maker. That took it to the next level. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yes, I like, I like, what's the word? I like the the passion. Yeah. I love the zeal. I would just hope you do it with your own land. Purchase your own land. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? I think she wants to buy her grandmother's land or basically tell her to hold on to it. Mm-hmm. But there is something to, and I will say again, it got to be in the hands of the G1s first. Yeah. Before you could come and just take what basically because I think we even heard on Nikki say in episodes like, hey, we all worked for our mother at one point and things like that. Yeah. We listen, we got skin in the game too. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, so so like I, I think I love her passion, but sometimes that zeal, that fire can can burn you up a little bit too much, you know? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Nicole has called a truce. Okay. She sends a text to the ladies for them to come to her house for some stretch therapy. Okay. Well, Keisha and Car- Caramel. Mm-hmm. Uh, Caramel is Keisha's girlfriend. They've been dating for about two years. They nice. Met, they met on Facebook. Keisha is telling Caramel that she plans to have a one-on-one with Nicole. Mm -hmm. Uh, She wants to talk about the factors that cause them to be disconnected. Mm -hmm. So Keisha says that she met the family through her aunt Jackie when she was around seven or eight years old. She was closer to Nicole when she was younger. When she became an adult, she felt that she wasn't as welcome. Mm. Now is the time that she needs, um, you know, her family since her mother has passed. Okay. And I I have another theory I want to throw out there. Throw it out there. (sighs) And um, ooh, no, say it. I can feel, I can feel them throwing the rocks at me already. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say You're it. You're talking to me. You ain't talking to nobody. Okay. N- nobody here. <laughs> I'm about to say it. I, 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 I ain't gonna throw nothing at you. I think a lot of these women, Nicole, Misha, Quita, are um, professionals mm-hmm. with educations and degrees, mm-hmm. and selling millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of real estate. Okay. Now, when Keisha is talking about how maybe we were all younger, all getting along, all close and stuff like that, maybe it's because as we were young, we were all kids. Mm. It's not like we had anything. It's not like we um, were in competition with each other for Mm -hmm. anything. We were all just having fun playing around. As some people get older... They might want to be around a certain social circle. Mm. Um, They might want to be around certain people to where they feel as though they're on the same level. Mm. And I don't necessarily know if Keisha is on the level of her siblings. And if Nicole, if that is in the back of her mind of who or the type of people I want to spend my time around. Mm. Now that can be throwing a whole wrench out there because I think that Nicole, I don't see her as like an elitist kind of person. I actually don't see her that way. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a tweener. Okay. And I'm it's hard tweener. to tell. I mean, I'm we're just tweener. getting to know yeah, these yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. So I don't fully believe she's an elitist, but I think that that might be a factor because when you're older, a lot of things are different. Who's married, who mm-hmm. has kids, mm-hmm. who has a house, mm-hmm. who has businesses. Like it could just be a thing of relatability of, my life is so different. I don't know if I could relate to you. Yeah. What are we going to talk about? And it might not be an elitist thing, but of just what we have in common thing too. Mm. So, um, I like your theory. Okay. I don't know if it's right, mm-hmm. but I, I, I like the, uh, I like the risk of it because it's season one. It's a new show. Mm-hmm. Episode two. We don't know nothing about these people. No, we don't. So this is the <laughs> most wrong we ever going to be on a show. You get what I'm saying? Season two, I'm telling you, I'm hitting it directly. I'm just like, if y'all's close when y'all kids, you're not close as adults. But, but, but the thing is, it, it could be multiple things. But my thing is, okay, that's one thing. as kids, mm-hmm. kids grow apart. Let's say if I'm kids and, 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 and like we're friends as kids, okay, in our teenage years, okay, I understand. I go to this school, you go to this school, whatever you're doing, I'm doing, right? Mm-hmm. I do not put it past them. Nicole is not 30 years old. Nicole is not 25 years old. Mm-hmm. So my thing is, when does it become an accountability on the adults to establish closeness, right? Yeah. And now it's the time as, as Nicole is planning a one-on-one with her, and it's like, She's saying things such as 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 we go see we need to go to therapy and like the walls need to come down. And I'm like, yes, but somebody needs to basically put their walls down first. Yeah. 
intentionally so we can get somewhere so Mm -hmm. the other person can feel welcome to put down their wall saying we both need to put our walls down and then everybody just go home (laughs) it's not a magical thing right so maybe nicole could be the one to put down her walls Mm -hmm. i'm just throwing it out there and basically invite her into the type of life that she has or the work that she has and things like that or just and i don't even want to make it a career thing the sisterhood yeah we ain't got to all work together but we can all be close yeah. Dude, you get what I'm saying? But see, then another thing, and Uh-oh. this is where I get nitpicky. Um, the other thing that's when I think about when they were sitting around talking about the table and um, Keisha was talking about, yeah, we can all, you know, take time to run the property and do what we need to do. And everybody is just like, er, mm-hmm. we got a property manager for that. Mm. And I'm just like, that's one of the things where it just makes me think, like, does Keisha feel other because she's just not in this um just in this group of women who kind of like have the know-how on real estate or life or just the way that they go about things compared to how Keisha does. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I, I feel like it's there. there's a difference yeah, there, you know? I think it's, I think, I, I don't think it's so much about the know-how, even though she was invited to say, hey, maybe you could come to this house and seminar and things like that in, yeah. in some episodes. I don't think that that was so much about the know-how, but it, I think that was an elitist Mm-hmm. statement to say because one thing that nicole says specifically that she just don't want to be in real estate she want to be in luxury, luxury. Yeah. real estate yeah so so there's a certain type of um um uh tax bracket she wants to sell to mm-hmm. she just don't want to sell houses yeah she wants to sell lifestyle she wants to sell dude you get what yeah, i'm saying yeah so and so that's why i'm like hey if we don't see eye to eye on how we do real estate property and things like that that should not be a reason why we still can't be close as sisters but that's but you do understand the example i said wasn't about what you just said yeah yeah, yeah. but i'm uh-huh. just saying for them to say oh no we got a property manager for that yeah i understand that but my thing is I think that is just an example of how close they're not as sisters. Gotcha. So if they were close as sisters, I think it would have been more like, I think Keisha would have known, oh, yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. like, I know you as a person mm-hmm. more than what you do in your practical life of working and things like that, you mm-hmm. know? So Aunt Nikki meets with her sisters, Cheryl and Charlotte. Okay. Uh, the G1s were helping their parents with their businesses. Pretty much as soon as they turned 16, they was working for their parents. Mm-hmm. So um, they're still helping with getting this event ready for Granny. Mm-hmm. Aunt Nikki tells them that the G2s want to buy the two-acre lot. Mm-hmm. Well, the parents basically, um, who was it? Well, I'll, let me finish this. So the parents okay. said that they wanted to sell the land to give to the children to pay off their mortgages for their inheritance. Mm-hmm. Charlotte thinks that the G2s are getting in the way of the natural order of life. Yes. Charlotte says that if mom was to sell it, um, though, she, they're not going to get a discount. Mm. <laughs> um, but the thing that I was going to say is that I think at some one point as well, they were saying that Frank, the grandpa, mm-hmm. Papa, he was saying that he wanted the land to go to the G2s. So that's where I think Misha also kind of gets her zeal from, or just like her mindset of let me try to convince granny as Mm -hmm. well is because Papa had a difference, a difference in opinion of what the land should be done for. Yeah. So that's another thing. And my Mm -hmm. thing is this though, unless it's in writing, Mm -hmm. it don't matter what Papa wanted. A lot mm-hmm. of things my mama wanted, a lot of things my daddy wanted, they didn't put it in writing. So guess what? I got the power. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So in this moment, I, I think, and, and like, like I said, this is the most wrong we're going to be. Be wrong with us, okay? <laughs> I want to know, right, I look at Nikki's house. And when I say Nikki, I'm talking about Nicole. Sorry. Okay. I should gave her nickname. I look at Nicole's house. Mm. Okay, you look like you're pretty, you're pretty good. Beautiful home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I look at Misha's house. Nice house. Mm-hmm. Really nice. It's very, it fits her personality. You get what I'm saying? As soon as you walk in her office right there, you get what I'm saying? It fits the personality, right? I look at uh, Quita is mm-hmm. the last one. I look at her house, but I don't judge her because she just got started. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? She was she went to school to be in a pharmacist and things yeah. like that. But then she was like, wait a minute. I do this half a year, and I'm making more money than what I do pharmacy for a year. So I'm still getting my, mm-hmm. I, I'm still getting my wheels turning, right? Do y'all really need talking to the g2s since y'all established yourselves in y'all way y'all did it guess what granny already did her part she paid for your license well you get what i'm saying yeah. nicole and misha you know what i mean hey i may not be in the same position as y'all mm-hmm. you get what i'm saying my house may not be as nice as y'all you get what i'm saying we may actually need the money yeah to where y'all may need the land mm-hmm. and i and, and really it's all about 
power. And when I say power, I mean, do you go with the person who has the smarter advice in the sense of Misha, of we should keep the land and, and actually build on it so it can stay in the family? That's the smarter decision. Or do you go with the one who has the power to make the decision? Mm. And my whole point is the G1s should be the one that should have the power to make the decision. Yeah. Smarter or not. People don't care about the smart decision. People care about who has the authority to sign off on a decision. Mm. And I feel like, yes, Misha, she's using her real estate. She's using her salesman thing to get it going. And she might, it might actually work. Yeah. But I, I wonder, is she so passionate about the land that she's kind of putting her relationship with the G1s at risk. Mm. Because if she gets the land, and like, yes, I got the land from Granny and things like that. I'm going to help the family. Do you help the family if the G1s don't want to talk to you? Mm. If, like, the G1s feel like you overstepped your bounds and that you kind of took things out. Now, all of a sudden, you got the land, but, like, what's the... What is the saying that they say? This is a deep saying. It, it really has nothing to do with this, but I'm going to use it. Okay. What what profits a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Mm. <laughs> so you gain you gain the land, but your family is split right. because they felt like you did things out of order, mm-hmm. out of the cycle of life is how they said it. And I feel like that's what makes it such a unique and interesting situation it, because how many mm-hmm. families do you know that have land to where the grandchildren are real estate agents and brokers? <laughs> <laughs> like this is so interesting because they have the know-how and the education, which I'm sure the G ones do as and, well. And the connect. Yeah. And yes. the connections to really make this thing mm-hmm. happen. Like what grand grandchildren have this ability to take their uh, grandparents land to the next level mm-hmm. in this way. Like that's what makes it so, so interesting. But I also, I'm also on the side of the natural order of things. I mean, the G ones, they, struggled and survived good times with their Mm -hmm. parents to create the life for their grandchildren Mm -hmm. to have these opportunities. So who's to say whatever inheritance they get should be skipped over them, Mm. you know? Yeah. But I, but the thing is like to have somebody who's real estate brokerage, all this type of thing, having all these agents and these networks, this could be a million dollar business. Tens of millions, tens of millions of dollars Mm -hmm. idea. So it, that's that's what makes it such like a tug and pull. But, it really does. But at the end of the day, mm-hmm. I don't care about tens of millions. Yeah. I, I it's my money and I want it now. Okay. Like like like, <laughs> like and let me decide. You tell it you you're spending my money. Uh huh. I I don't even got it yet. You get what I'm saying? And you already allocating it to something that I didn't agree to. And I'm the one with the power. You're the one with the plan. Right. But I'm the one with the power. So do you go with the one with the power, or do you go with the one with the plan? And the thing about it is, I normally go with the one that got the plan. Mm-hmm. But the plan, the planner don't got the power. Yeah. Yeah, I I like I like the storyline before you know season three, four, five go into basically who is divorced and who's together. This is actually this is good. This is this is good discussion. So Nicole calls Quita. Yeah, uh, Quita sent Nicole some cookies. Okay, you know, to apologize. Um, and she um is Nicole's about to have her one on one with Keisha. Okay, so Keisha comes over to Nicole's house. Mm-hmm. Nicole asks her pretty much, you know, why is there a wall between us? Mm. Well, Nicole says that maybe she didn't create a safe space for Keisha to talk to her, mm-hmm. but she also feels that it goes vice versa as well. So she doesn't know what triggers Keisha mm-hmm. and Keisha admits that sometimes she's triggered about uh, where her place is as far as in the family. Mm-hmm. And she didn't say in life, yeah. but I kind of want to say that that might be another thing as well. I don't, I don't think so. Okay. And and by so. in life, I don't mean like, huh, how do I say it? From what I hear from Keisha's story, it sounds like there has been a lot of um, um, upheaval or maybe not as much stability. I'll put it that way. In, mm. in most recent years, mm. from what I'm hearing, when it comes to the ex- and the current girl mm-hmm. and the dynamics between that, the passing of her mother was very hard, something yeah. that she had to work through. So I feel like Keisha might just be in a place of just not feeling um, comfortable, period. You know, there's yeah. a lot of transitioning happening in her life. And I think that the situation with Nicole doesn't help. Yeah. So, let, let's finish this scene and then I'll give you my opinion. So Nicole feels uh, that they are scared to come to each other. Mm-hmm. Nicole felt guilty because she feels like she grew up with a better life. Start right there. Keisha said, 
I like my life was good. Yeah, she said I had a lot of love in my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and I think you're making that mistake Nicole's doing. I think you're. I think we are putting Keisha, and Keisha said it specifically. I don't know which episode it was. She said, "I'm not the side baby," and things like that. To where it's like she's like people are viewing me as like basically I don't know the I don't know the exact phrase she used, but I'm a paraphrase. She basically said like people view me as like like the side baby and things like that. Like. Yes, my, my father, our father was doing whatever he was doing, but it's like, I'm not like the secret child and things like that. And I think that's where a lot of perception that people are getting with Keisha is basically like, oh, you're on the outside. I know like, you know, we, you probably feel some type of way because, you know, I grew up in a better life than you. And she, Keisha's like, uh, I had a lot of love. Like, yeah. like, 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 like I, I'm, I, I'm okay. And I think there's a lot of perception when it comes to their relationship which I'm happy they have in this one-on-one besides actually talking and actually like asking these questions besides perceiving mm. and things like that. Like, mm. Hey, what are your triggers? Hey, what are these walls? You get what I'm saying? Besides actually like putting it on someone without them actually saying it for themselves. But I also think that when she's talking about her triggers, I think she's speaking out of experience as Keisha getting upset or shutting down or things like that. Mm-hmm. So, but I agree. Like, the question could still stood to be asked what upsets you type mm-hmm. of thing. But moving on. So Nicole says that their dad was blamed for a lot and the dad didn't really know how to deal with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, dad also was not a great communicator and, no. at expressing himself. Mm-mm. So he took it really hard when his father passed and dad thanked Nicole for helping his dad. And that meant a lot for Nicole for the, for their dad to express that. Mm-hmm. So um, they are both happy that they've had this one-on-one and they're yeah. hoping that this is a good start to kind of bringing that wall down a bit. Okay. So moving on. But the only thing I want to say about when Nicole says she grew up with a better life, um, I don't know why. Maybe I'm partial to Nicole, but I didn't think that she was saying that as a jab. Nicole went into further explanation of saying that dad provided a lot in our household. So I took that to be that he was not probably supporting the household the way he was with his children, mm. with Keisha. You who, know what I'm saying? Who are you to say that you grew up with a better life? Because you, because it's only me here. So you basically saying like, I know you probably feel in the way because I grew up with a better life. I, I never even accuse you of that. So, uh, but the thing is, better life can be taken in so many different ways. So don't, so that, so, so, so don't use it. You're right. You, 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 I can like, hear that. Like, like I but, th- I, but I'm saying that that's why I think Nicole used it is because the dad lived in the home, provided for that home, mm-hmm. and that was something that was missing from the dad mm-hmm. doing that. For maybe, Keisha. maybe. You know what I'm saying? I think Nicole. This is my opinion. I think Nicole views it as, oh, my dad was with my mom, mm-hmm. and he made a mistake. And he has something on the side. Y'all are basically the same age. You get what I'm saying? So almost the same time. So I think she's like viewing it as like, oh, you are the mistake and things like that. Where Keisha's seen it from her perspective where she's like, uh, we're kind of the same age at the same time. Like, even though like, you know, like he may have been married to your, your mom and things like that. Like, I don't view myself or I don't view my life as any less or better than yours. And I think Nicole need to be careful, especially when it comes to getting walls down and for them to feel like it's a safe space to not use certain verbiage as like, I know you probably feel the type of way because we grew up better. And I'm just like, I want to use that type of language with Keisha. That's fair. Or in a conversation where I'm trying to get someone to put their walls down. You that's, get what I'm saying? That's fair. So uh, Misha and Quita meet up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Granny was saying that she was open to keeping the land in the family. Okay. Misha plans to meet with the developers to help get a plan pretty much on paper so that way they, they can show it to Granny. Okay. Quita knows that they have to get the G1s on board in order for this to work. Facts. Misha knows the G1s are going to have a lot of questions mm-hmm. and concerns. Um, and what if Granny passes during the building of this idea that most likely will happen um they don't want the family to be destroyed over money Mm -hmm. um but misha hasn't discussed this information with nicole yet Mm, why not and the thing about it is i i I will give misha respect she said she would want nicole to be part of it Mm -hmm. but nicole nicole is basically she's like neutral she's Mm kind of just i think she's gauging on what she want to do 
Yeah. So Quita has a trip with some friends coming up. She's yeah. doing some packing. Chris plans on going out with the guys when the ladies have their stretching night. Mm-hmm. Chris says that Nicole and Misha haven't contacted him about the contract yet. Mm. Um, he also wants to have his own business and get that off of the ground. Mm-hmm. He feels that if he's in a situation he's not appreciated in, he is going to put his focus into himself. As you should. Mm-hmm. Well, you should, you know, once you quit that other job. Mm. <laughs> Or do that at your five to nine after your nine to five. Mm -hmm. So, well, Nicole says that she needs to work on recognizing when another person is exhausted. She yelling for Larry to hurry up and get up because the lady's about to come over Mm -hmm. and Larry need to go out with the guys. So, uh, the stretch therapist comes in. Mm -hmm. Uh, Monet is one of the, well, is the last single G2. Mm -hmm. So, she's flirting with the stretch therapist. She's asking if he's married and he is. So, the flirtation stops. Oh, man. (laughs) The rest of the ladies arrive. They all get stretched out. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, the guys meet up and they are just talking about how the Braden women are women who make power moves. Mm-hmm. It is a woman driven family. Yeah. Back at ladies night, Nikki says the G ones feel that granny doesn't want to sell the acres, the two acres to the G twos. Mm-hmm. Misha is saying that, well, granny told me she was going to hold off on selling to outside people so that we could put our plan together. Do you see what I mean? Already. She's like, well, that's not what granny told me. Granny said out her mouth mm-hmm. that she would do this. Misha is going about it passionately and she's not going to let even her own mama get in the way. You get what I'm saying? And things of that nature. I think the only problem with this is whenever there's too many conversations and everybody who needs to make the decision is not together, then you're playing the game of telephone. Mm -hmm. I think it's good to have Nikki there as like a mediator, but I think there needs to be a G1 there as well besides Nikki. Right. The G1 with the power. So either Charlotte or Cheryl. Yes. Somebody there. So it won't be a game of telephone. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So Nicole said granny can do what granny wants to do. See, Mm -hmm. undercutting Misha right there. (laughs) Aunt Nikki says Misha has some work to do if she wants to convince the Mm G1s because a few of them, which is Charlotte and Cheryl, Mm -hmm. are the only ones that granny's really going to listen to when it comes to decision making. Mm -hmm. So moving on. Uh, Misha is talking about how they have seminars to educate the public. Yeah. Um, Keisha says that she plans on going to one of the homeowning ones. Mm-hmm. Um, and Quita asked her, so what's up with marriage? You and Caramel. Mm. Keisha says it's coming. It's something that they're talking about. Well, they tell Keisha that she need to go ahead and keep her money separate. Okay. And then everybody, then I think Monet is the one who asked, so who all got that money together with their husbands? And everybody's quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, you know, he doesn't need to know where all the skeletons are buried. All right. Keep, yeah. Keep yourself a little money to the side. Okay. So back at guys night, Chris says that Nicole will drop everything for her client, but she needs to address the contract issue with him. This mm-hmm. is still an outstanding problem. And guess what? Larry agreed. Mm-hmm. Larry agreed. Like Nicole would drop everything for her client. Yeah. Okay. Well, Justin, uh, Misha's husband says that, you know what, Chris, I try to get a photo shoot with Uh-oh. you going. Mm-mm. You don't call me. You don't text back. It's hard to get you to do much of anything, bro. Man, come on, man. Chris says that he deals with a lot of people. And Justin's like, we all deal with a lot of people. We all work. We all got stuff we got to do. Mm. And he says, Chris says he has days where he just doesn't want to talk to nobody. Not on a day that you agreed <laughs> that you're going to shoot something for me. <laughs> okay. So back at ladies night, Nikki asks, is Chris still with Brayden? Mm. Nicole says that we are working on a contract. You can't go to any other job and say what you're not going to do. Mm-hmm. Quita says, well, look, y'all, I'm not going to tell my husband any of this type of shady stuff. Mm-hmm. And Nicole says, look, you know, he may not always be your husband, but you'll always be tied to us. Do you see what I mean? These little shady comments. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, basically, your husband, not your family. What? <laughs> he is my family. <laughs> that's 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 what she said. And the thing is with that, here's here's a go, another one of me reaching because I don't know these people. Mm. I think Nicole is speaking from a place of um, uh, personal what, it perspective. Hurt? Okay. Personal perspective. Because we saw in that conversation with Nicole and her husband to where the husband was like, you know, I'm such and such years old. I ain't starting over again. And Nicole was talking about, I definitely could start over again. I'm in my prime. But you're Pretty not. <laughs> but 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 So that's why I'm saying that when Nicole says comments like this and yes it could rub people the wrong way, um but I also feel like she that's how she feels. 
Mm-hmm. Whereas Quita may feel like, no, that's my husband. That's my family. Like, what do you mean? That's not going to be my husband. But even in the confessional, Quita was just like, I get what she's saying because people can get divorced and these will still be my sister cousins. So. No, but, but that's, but of course, like if, mm-hmm. but, but at the end of the day, all of y'all got kids. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so he's going to be around. So, so like, it's not no, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's not no random. It's just, I just find it very interesting that this is now the second time somebody says something shady. I think she said that mainly because she don't respect Chris. Mm. It has nothing to do with the whole, um, um, like, you know, like, you know, it's my experience. She don't respect Chris. She don't respect his hustle. She don't respect how he work. She don't respect how he handled his business. And based on what, uh, uh basically his, his, uh, at, at the guy's uh, thing in the bar, my man took a day off when he was supposed to be taking pictures. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, Chris do need to do a better job of basically representing himself and his work representing him that he's, like, dependable mm-hmm. in, in, like, some way. But I will say that was a jab. Yeah. That was a 100% shady, shady type of comment to say to that sister. I don't know if this is a little get back because I don't know how. Listen here. When, when, when people want to be shady... I don't know the depths of how much shade they will go. I don't know if this was a little get back for the little wall down comment in, in, in episode one. But saying that to Quita about the husband that kind of don't want to work, like he ain't always going to be a husband. Mm. Like, 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 trust me, like these are smart women. These are powerful women. It's not just as simple as like, oh, yeah, I'm just saying that. I think there's always real meaning behind everything Nicole says okay. and with real intentions. Okay. And I think that it's foul to say to someone who is married. I will never say to uh, uh, about my wife that my sister or like or like the people in my family is over her mm-hmm. and things like that. And I don't think Nicole would like it either. You right. get what I'm saying? So like that's why I say Nicole got a little nice nasty to her. Let us know what you think about Nicole. Mm. You know? Yeah. What is your thoughts about this episode? Um, overall episode's good. I mean, I'm enjoying the show. The show is great. Yes. Just the family dynamics, mm-hmm. the, the stuff about the land, the difference of opinions, like and just the fact that they can all get together and express themselves. Mm-hmm. Like it's just it's good stuff. It's good TV. Listen, mm-hmm. bear with us. This is the most wrong we gonna be about a show. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new show, new cast, new storyline, all the above. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? Y'all be good. We see y'all next time. Bye.